And so I just went through the the rabbit hole of finding the coordinates of where that building was, then mapping out the acreage using Google Earth. Talking Joby Aviation here today with our favorite expert out of California, Travis. Great to have you here. And you've done some interesting due diligence on the second location of Joby in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, some, some really interesting uh, research I was able to uncover here about Joby and, and what those future plans will look like at the Dayton International Airport. So uh, some perspective, uh, Dayton, Ohio is roughly uh, the, the Midwest or, or be considered um, kind of a Midwest or central location within the United States. So just logistically, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, furthermore, for the footprint at the airport, um, I've done some math on what they've uh, spoken about the size of the footprint uh, of the total campus would be, which is 140 acres. And then the facility itself um, at, at full scale would be uh, 2 million square feet of manufacturing space. And as you'll see in, in some of these graphics here, that that ends up being almost the same size as the airport currently is, is how big the Joby campus will be. So that's really exciting that Joby's manufacturing campus will be essentially as large as an international airport. Um, and then also there is still some space in there uh, to grow. So uh, very interesting you know, topics for us. And then as well, there is a neighboring FedEx facility. So that is also helpful for you know, just logistics and moving parts uh, because most of which uh, that will be happening in the initial phase at Dayton uh, is going to be uh, parts manufacturing. And that'll happen again at the uh, United States Postal Service facility that Joby has purchased uh, that has, was previously um, out of business or out of operation. And uh, Joby will initially start there with the uh, 200,000 square feet uh, facility that they have on site. So there's also some other uh, little nuggets that we can talk about, Arn, uh, maybe some background if you wanted to give uh, in terms of some of the government facilities and, and nearby uh, components of things. In Dayton. I was uh, going to ask if you could quickly explain what kind of rabbit hole math you needed to do, Travis, to find out where this location was actually located and also how large that, that building work should be. Could you please share those maths? I think it's very interesting. So, uh, you know, look through some city documents uh, and as much as was public um, to find out what the agreement between uh, Joby and the city was for the Dayton campus. And originally the and what was released was the USPS facility. So when I started to dig deeper into those documents, that's where it's actually enumerated that the um, some of the other information about the future campus. And so I just went through the the rabbit hole of finding the coordinates of where that building was, then mapping out the acreage using Google Earth, uh, then started to do some approximations uh, from those Google Google Earth views of what the current USPS facility uh, f footprint looked like uh, since that was 200,000 square feet and uh, knowing that Joby is aiming for 2 million for the overall campus. And uh, yeah, with my beautiful graphic skills was able to put this together. So it's just good uh, visualization to see what Joby has in store and that uh, this isn't just, you know, again, some small prototype thing that they're trying to do in secret base in, in California. This is going to be a large full scale facility, um, you know, again, matching almost essentially the size of a, a current international airport. Amazing work, Travis, really cool. Uh, thanks for sharing that with us and exciting also to see that there will be very interesting neighbor for Joby going forward in Dayton. Yes, so uh, the Air Force uh, has some uh, facilities nearby that uh, we already knew that uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, uh, when they made the Dayton announcement, um, that obviously they're in close proximity. Uh, if you flew between the two uh, in the future with an S-4 aircraft, it'd just be you know, a two or three minute flight um, on the ground. I think it's roughly about 30 to 45 minutes depending on uh, traffic to get across the city. But uh, there is also uh, something else that we weren't aware of previously, uh, which was a research facility uh, that the Air Force has uh, within the city limits that nondescript, uh, so it you know, may not necessarily be known um, by everybody there of what's going on, but that is a research facility for all things Air Force uh, related to their AFWORKS program, uh, part of which is advanced air mobility, EV toll, uh, and in particular, um, Joby, uh, since Joby has you know over $130 million investment and contract with the government. So a uh, very interesting neighbor to have there. I'm sure that they're researching things that are only yet to, to come into the future, uh, potentially what the uh, old S-4 aircraft since it's now going to be used for research and development for future aviation technology. Uh, whatever that means, I think will be happening within uh, that facility, at least in some 
some shape and form. Exciting news. And apart from Dayton, we also have uh, Marina ramping up uh, production capacity from 12 to 25 aircraft per year. Yeah, it was really exciting news that we saw in terms of the expansion for Marina facility. So, you know, having been there um, back in you know October of 2022 in person, and even at that point, they were starting to you know, show that they would be able to make, you know, a good amount of aircraft. Then when we heard um, last year about that uh, 12 aircraft per year number was going to actualize in, in 2025, that was really exciting. And then to hear that now uh, 25 aircraft per year could be coming out of Marina really starts to put things in perspective. Uh, even if Marina didn't grow any larger than that, that means that by the time you get to a 2028, 20, a 2030, you're at hundreds of aircraft, which is already a, a significant um, ramp comparatively to uh, helicopter manufacturers today. And that's completely excluding uh, the fact that Dayton will be coming online, you know, probably realistically sometime in 25, late 25, 26, at least at, at a initial ramp rate. And that'll be the tens to hundreds of aircraft per year. So, so very quickly, and uh, just a couple sh years in short order, we could be looking at hundreds of aircrafts and, and some of the more you know extreme bull scenarios, thousands of aircraft. Uh, so very exciting news there out of Marina. 25 seems small for now, but it will be a big number in the future. And just to put that number into comparison right now, there's around 35,000 commercial helicopters in operation in North America. Yeah, th and that's, some, that's actually a great point and something that I, I think we've spoken about previously is it is so important for Joby, you know, at this point, to ramp their manufacturing. Obviously, they have to take care of pilots. We're in good shape there. Obviously, we have to take care of safety and certification. We're making great progress and on track there. When we start to see, you know, how many aircraft can we make, we also, you know, need, need to be careful of that we're not making too many without having the markets developed, um, because there's no way that Joby is going to replace the entire, you know, current helicopter or rotorcraft fleet, and that will be something that happens over time. But they need to scale, you know, at the right pace. Even though they want to go uh, at full speed ahead, there might be times where um, they have to pick their spots, because also, you know, if we are going to end up having such a, a large footprint in the Middle East and the Emirates, Dubai, Saudi, um, it might not make sense to scale all those aircraft to be built in maybe the States. Uh, maybe that's for a future facility. So just some nuance there uh, for us to look forward to as the, uh, the exciting time ahead. Yeah, and we talked about it in our clip about the total addressable market, that there's gonna be a lot of different use cases beyond what is currently being served by helicopters. So it's not so much about replacing, it's actually different use cases, uh, being able to fly in areas uh, that are currently prohibited for helicopters due to noise level or also pollution footprint. There's gonna be different use cases uh, that are currently not being addressed, uh, also with the cost per mile, cost per passenger becoming more commercially viable. Interesting times ahead. Do check out our video that we did on horses versus cars, that the total addressable market might be much bigger than you think. People did get it also wrong in 1910 when Ford only produced 2,000 cars per year. Then the Ford Model T came along, economics changed, different business cases came along, and all of a sudden, Ford was making in the hundreds of thousands of cars per year and the car market surpassed the horse market by the uh, total passenger miles traveled by 50x up to now. So not just replacing one technology with the other, but different use cases coming along, changing the game, changing the addressable market overall. Yeah, the future is bright and one you know, comparison to the car is, you know, look at where we've come to now where you know, a company like Tesla is making thousands of vehicles per week. And I use them as a comparison just because it's an electrical vehicle. It's essentially a computer on wheels, uh, more something more complex than a, a standard ICE vehicle. But if Joby could get to a thousand vehicles in a year, the, the you know, ability for this company to make cash is almost boggles your mind. And so, yes, a plane is much harder to make than a car, but just the, the scale that we're looking for, we could really not be that far off of something really transformative uh, once we really dig into the numbers. So uh, they obviously have to execute, but really exciting times ahead. Great for sharing these insights and uh, amazing stuff from Dayton and uh, Marina. Travis, thank you very much.